Uh, okay, so uh, we're talking about the configuration of atoms and how the electrons are going to the different orbitals. For example, aluminum, which has 13 protons, and this is what the atomic number tells us. That number that you write on the bottom left-hand corner of the symbol tells you how many protons are in the element. And because it has 13 protons, it's going to have to have 13 electrons. Okay, so they fit in the orbitals, and the orbitals will hold a maximum of two if it's the first orbital, eight for the second one, eight for the third one, and a maximum of two for the fourth one, at least for our purposes now. And uh, later on you'll find out that there's a more complicated system of explaining it, but for grade 10, it's enough to go up this way. So if al aluminum has 13 protons, it has to have also 13 electrons to balance out the charges of the 13 protons. So where are you going to put those 13 electrons? You're going to put two in the first orbital, uh, eight in the second one, and three in the valence shell, which is the last shell. The last shell of electrons is called the valence shell. And you'll find that when atoms lose electrons, they like to lose elect enough electrons so that they resemble the closest noble gas. In the case of aluminum, the closest noble gas is neon. So aluminum will typically lose three electrons when it forms a charge uh, substance, an ion. And when it does that, it has a plus three charge. And those three electrons will have been lost in that outer shell. So now, it resembles the structure of neon, uh, the electronic structure of neon. So it becomes isoelectronic, just means it has the same number of electrons as neon. Nitrogen has seven protons. And therefore, when it's neutral, it also has seven electrons, two and five. And when it becomes charged, it becomes the nitride anion, it will gain three electrons which will then fill up the shell. It'll add three more electrons to this shell, so you get electrons in the outer shell, eight electrons in the outer shell of nitrogen. Uh, oxygen will gain two, to go from 2,6 to 2,8. And fluorine will gain one, because it has seven in that outer shell, it'll gain one to have eight. So you end up having all, all three, all four of these atoms end up having the same configuration of electrons as neon which brings us to the next point. Whenever atoms take on a charge, they do so in a manner that their electron configuration resembles the configuration of the closest noble gas. The noble gases, as you may already know, are helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. If you want to memorize them, it's heen, archer, xer. They make one line on the periodic table called, it's called group 18, or also known as the noble gases. Noble gases are stable by themselves. They do not take part in chemical reactions for the most part. They can be forced to take part in chemical reactions, but for the most part, they're known as inert gases. And because, because they have a stable electronic configuration, they don't typically take part in chemical reactions to achieve a more stable configuration because they already have a stable configuration. On the other hand, other atoms do take part in chemical reactions and they do one of three things. They either gain electrons, lose electrons, or share electrons. Uh, so how do ionic substances form? Positive ions are attracted to negative ions, so the ions pull each other close together to form a crystal lattice. So for example, uh, sodium and chlorine. The sodium cation is, has a positive one charge. The chloride anion has a negative one charge. They they are attracted electrostatically to form sodium chloride. If you were to look at a crystal of sodium chloride, you would see alternating uh, sodium chloride, sodium chloride, sodium chloride. And what they do is they get close together and they, they're attracted electrostatically. The row behind that will have chlorine, uh, uh, chloride, sodium, chloride, sodium. So what happens is you never get two negative charges close together, and you never get two positive charges close together. And that forms a very strong crystal high melting point because of the strong attraction between the atoms. If you should put pressure on the crystal so that you could cause even just one atom movement of a whole line of those of those atoms, now you're going to force negatives to come close to negatives and positives to come close to positives, and it'll cause the crystal to crack. It'll actually fly apart because those charges will repel each other. So sodium chloride is an ionic compound. Ionic compounds are made of a metal and a non-metal. So there are things from the left side of the periodic table like to combine with elements from the right side of the periodic table because metals like to give up electrons and non-metals like to take electrons. 